discriminate he wants someone based on color racism is a discrimination or act based on behaviors or opinions towards one or another person racism is somebody judging from your skin color your race or your experience racism is like prejudice especially like someone's skin or background or like places where they come from racism is basically making fun of someone else based on their culture or their difference background and their skin color racism means like prejudice against a certain race or a certain like religion racism is prejudice against someone for their background race or gender racism is um, the act of being judgmental based on someone's race or color. Racism has been a continued theme in the United States um, since slavery all the way to present because it was built into the system. Therefore, people have developed those ideas and continue to carry them and teach them to their children. So therefore, it is still present today. Uh, my thoughts on racism in society today are that we've come a long way uh, since the 1960s, uh, but here lately we seem to have regressed a little bit and it seems like we're going backwards and a lot of the protections that were enacted uh, to level the playing field uh, through the affirmative action years have been overturned and uh, we're starting to see an uptick uh, in hate crimes and uh, sadly uh, racism still persists and is very much alive today. I've uh, uh, experienced racism in some of my classes most students assume that I don't speak or like I'm not intelligent enough to be in that class. I've learned it from people like my parents and like um, school. Like if I go to a store to buy something uh, with friends or someone, um, usually they say, usually they will cut you into groups or individual because they think you're going to do something. So you can experience this with the way people interact with you depending on what you look like or who you are. So you can experience racism anywhere. I experience it through uh, this school, the sports, some of the sports I play. Um, I experience through the uh, different hobbies I do um, constantly. So yeah. What is like you experience from learning from different people, talking with them, doing what they do. You could, you could experience this like when you're at, at school or when you're working at a job or when you're like going out to eat somewhere. Um, as an African American female, it can be very difficult because you have basically two things that um, may be a roadblock in per se in a professional career. Um, you already have the fact that of being a minority um, African American where people um, may look at you differently or treat you differently than they treat others in the workplace and then with being a female um, you know at times females are looked at as inferior or um, they're not promoted as much at times in the workplace. So as a professional, I did have some obstacles that I did have to face um, in the workforce, which is one reason why I decided to start my own business. Um, and it led me to entrepreneurship because then that way I would be able to be my own boss and then I would know that I would have a workplace where these things would not be a factor. Um, we serve, um, all of our students are minority students at this point. We serve everyone, but um, and we do have a large portion of minority staff at my child care facility. Um, and I'm, I'm there to ensure that the minorities and the female staff do not have to face these issues. And I'm there, to, I'm there for any female or African American that needs to be advocated for, not only at my workplace, but at any workplace. I 
I like to say that there, uh, that there were few, uh, but the reality is that there, is that there are many. Uh, being the first uh, African American or person of color uh, to hold any county position, not, uh, uh, mine just happens to be county council, uh, to be the first in the 200 and plus year history of the county, uh, what that means in terms of uh, what I have come to grips with is that for over 200 years, no one uh, at that level of government ha has had to listen to any of our thoughts, any of our ideals, any of our problems, uh, or what we thought the solution to those problems were, uh, it meant uh, an information um, uh, deficit. Uh, we didn't know where the county dollars came from or how they're expended, and, and uh, just being a new face or a new voice in the room that doesn't look like everybody else, uh, and, and no one's had to, uh, to uh, consider some of those things, uh, it, it can be a little challenging. My job as police officer often gave me an opportunity to deal with racism, to learn how to handle it, how to fit it into my scheme of life, what to do about it, because racism is a hurtful situation between people. And once you learn to deal with racism, you are able to do a better job wherever you're working. I went into the Erie Police Department when I was 22, or 23, I'm sorry, 23 years of age. And I was very young, and the police department was predominantly Caucasian at that time. I believe there were probably three African-American officers on the police department, and it was under a court order that I was able to enter the police department. And it was because of racism that they had to come up with a program that would allow African-American people to be exposed to law enforcement and to actually come on to the police department. It was actually built into the court order, which somebody was very smart when they did that. And they hired 10 men, 10 white men, and 10 white, no, 10 officers on each side one white female, one black female. The other nine officers on either side were all white or all black. So racism was dealt with immediately when we came into the police department. It's like, you guys are just here because you're black. You guys are just here because you are of minority origin. So you're not up on a good footing right there. But when you get into that police car, and it's just the two of you, you actually take on the human aspect of people. You laugh out loud, you laugh at people, you laugh with people, and laughter is probably the common denominator that allows you to coexist. So racism is there, but it can be dealt with, and you can continue to do what you need to do in life. No hate in this place. No, no hate, hate in this, this place. place. Separation, segregation, no no alienation. What you thinking? No, no hate, hate, no hate. You From the north, tell me to go. There's one force, pay to be the semi no hate, no no hate. Street. I can't make us a line. No hate, think no I'm hate. not trying. I'm done with this. Hey, don't just no no hate. This no ain't hate. my fate. I had to pay a fee to get no hate, no hate. No hate, no hate. Separation. No hate, no hate. Segregation. No hate, no hate. We a nation. No hate, no hate. What you thinking? No hate, no hate. The only thing we have to fear is the rest of our roses like a hero off the shelf. No hate, no hate. Now get out your guns with these roses. No hate, no hate. No hate, no hate. No hate, no hate. No hate, no hate. Disrespectful, invisible, 
Because I am black, I am expected to be aggressive and rude. Because I am black, I am expected to be uneducated and loud. Because I'm black, it's whack that people think we talk smack. Because I'm black, I'm expected to be a follower, but I'm a leader. I'm educated. I'm strong. I'm talented. I'm confident. I'm beautiful. And I'm black. Therefore, my skin color does not define who I am. Equality is, you know, to give equal equal chance to everybody, you know, don't let anybody feel left out and so everybody has a shot like everybody else. Equality is just treating people with the same and equal respect. Equality is the act or um, action of showing someone that uh, certain things are able to like be shared equally, such as rights that we all deserve. and. Um, Equality, I'm thinking like everybody like has supposed to have the same like equal rights. Equality is when everybody is treated the same no matter what race you are, your gender, or your age. When what everyone gets the same thing and no one gets left out. Yeah. Equality true. is everyone no matter what color or um or who you are having the same opportunities as everyone else. Equality means treating everyone fairly, depending no matter what uh, they believe in or who they are. I feel that um, with the population that we have in our schools um, being at about 60% minority, I feel like it is um, a subject to be looked at. Um, I do feel like we do need to have a more diverse staff in our schools so that the children can see a reflection of, their, of themselves in our professional. I think that this is a subject that should be discussed and looked at more closely. Um, we, are, we are personally, I know that I am looking at uh, minority um, inequities in the school district and um, there is currently a study being done on, on the situation um, at certain grade levels, but once again, with the new high school being combined, and I feel like, um, it is being addressed with the new position that was created with uh, Mr. Ken Nixon as the minority, um, basically our professional minority consultant so that he can take a, talk to some of these students, see what's going on with some of them on a administration level and maybe take some action about doing some of these things. Not only should we be trying to improve voter participation for minorities, uh, we should be trying to improve voter participation for Americans. Uh, sadly, I think the last local election here uh, was probably 23 or 24 percent, and it generally runs that average, uh, and that's of 23 or 24 percent of all the people who are registered to vote. Uh, but there are so many people who, who, who uh, haven't taken advantage uh, or haven't done their civic responsibility, it's really, uh, along with it being a privilege it's a, and a right, it's a responsibility. And so when we don't go to the polls and when we don't vote, uh, then decisions are made for us by those, that minority uh, number or the small minority of people who do go. And I'm not saying, when I say minority, uh, I'm not saying in terms of ethnicity, I'm saying in terms of the, the versus the major number of people who are registered to vote, only a small minority of them come out, and that's that 22, 23%. Um, and it allows for us to 
Uh, when that doesn't happen, when we don't go out to vote, it allows for us to have a climate somewhat uh, in what we live in. We find ourselves today after the last presidential election. We find ourselves in a, a climate where uh, intolerance uh, seems to uh, be the order of the day. Uh, when those Voting Rights Acts of 1965, uh, when it legislated that we could have that right to vote, uh, it seemed that we were leaning more towards tolerance. Um, and so when we don't go out and exercise our rights and when we don't go out and exercise our responsibilities, then laws are enacted upon us that don't always work in our favor. Uh, and so in, from 1965, uh, up until recently, uh, people believed into the, into the American dream, uh, but we have so much apathy, not just in the black uh, and communities of color or poor communities, uh, but there, there's apathy in the white communities and the rural communities as well. Uh, people don't believe in the American dream like they did when my, our parents were, and, and when you thought that your children would would do and you hoped in, that they would prosper more than that each generation uh, would do better. And uh, I think sadly my generation is the first generation where that didn't happen and and uh, I think that um, we improve racial relationships uh, one person at a time one relationship at a time uh, you can legislate laws on people but you can't legislate hearts The key to impro improving employment has to do with education. The higher you go in school, the higher you can climb. When I was at the police department, you could enter with a high school diploma. Most of the officers who were there entered with high school diploma. But after monitoring how people were elevated in the police department, I decided it's time to go back to school. You have to go to school so that you have credentials to climb on. When I went back to school, I went to Edinburgh, and I went as an adult. Let me tell you now, as young people, go to school now while you're young. Before you start working, get your education. Get your bachelor's, and that's not enough today. Your bachelor's is not enough today. It was enough when I was there. Get your master's degree, and if you can move into a PhD, do that. It allowed me to climb in the police department to the level of deputy chief. The next level was chief of police, okay? So it tells you, you have to have concrete credentials to make your employment last and so that it pays off for the time and the work you put into it. Because uh, black or white, uh, I, what I find is we all want the same things. And we all want that our children to do better than we did. We all want uh, for our children to be, live in a clean environment, a safe environment. We all want for our children to be able to go to clean schools and, and to be able to have an affordable, quality, accessible education. And we all want our children to have opportunities. Uh, and so uh, we try to foster the environment uh, in my household uh, that we don't judge people uh, by the color of the skin. We, we judge you by uh, by what you do. Uh, and my brother and I have this saying uh, that we say, well, I, I, can, I can show you better than I can tell you. Because uh, people tell you a lot of things. They tell you they don't see race. Uh, but I can tell you they do see race. Uh, and it's not, race, uh, race isn't always a pretty sight uh, when we do see it. But when we get, when we're able to overcome it in those instances, in those one-on-one -on -one relationships, beautiful, beautiful things happen uh, because, it, um, because I believe that the blessing is in our unity uh, and America truly can't be as great as America should or will be uh, until we're all on a, a level playing field and sadly that isn't the case. Mm -hmm. Jesus loves the little children All of the children of the world Red and yellow, black and white They are precious in his sight
to the most dangerous road in the city for young people to cross or to navigate, where young people have lost their life, where there's a young man clinging to his life who is hit right around the corner. We're going to get up there and pray for his family because we believe in two things, the power of prayer and the power of our feet. And we can do what Dr. Martin Luther King did and what Rosa Parks did in a nonviolent way with young people like you, with young people like you standing up and taking a stand, asking the people who drive to respect the privilege of driving that they have by slowing down so they don't hit someone's child and run. Okay? Now, if you're with me on that, let me see your hands. Okay. Now, that's... wins. So Father, we ask you to bless that family. Give us, show us all the miracle that you can, that you can make, Father. And we just ask you to bless this corner so no other young person can hear. We'll always praise and glorify and magnify you. Amen. Amen. Buffalo Road. Y'all look out.
Why did you participate in the march yesterday? Um, I participated in the march yesterday because I wanted, personally, I think it's important to raise an awareness for the public to see how dangerous the uh, Bayfront connector have been because there is not enough sidewalks for the people to cross and some cars even exceed their um, limit the limit they're supposed to be going they exceed that so i find that to be dangerous so and most people don't know about that and there have been multiple accidents that have occurred in that place so yeah to bring in awareness for children's safety march was about raising awareness for the kids that cross the bayfront and the kids that get into accidents there. Um, How did you go on the children's march? Because um, what I've heard about the eight-year-old eight and um, the five-year-old getting hit. What was the march about? Um, personally, I marched because I wanted to feel what some of the um, kids in, 19, in the 1960s felt when they was marching. How can the city? Well, the Children's March we have is basically inspired from the Children's March in 1963 when children of all ages came together, left school to do something that the adult couldn't do. So basically to fight for equality, civil rights movement, women's rights movement. So we was actually inspired by that because we know that children ha do have voices, no matter the age or the size. So how can the city of Erie improve this problem? Well, recently we've noticed that there have been a lot of hit and run, and mm -hmm. it's mostly with children in elementary school. We haven't heard anything from high school yet. But we're trying to raise awareness to the Erie community mm -hmm. that there, it is a serious problem because now we have kids outside of school and we do need safety for our kids. I have a four year old. I want him to know that he can be safe crossing the street. And with what we're doing, I think that leaders of Erie will see that, you know, we need safety yeah. for our kids. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Tolerance is showing respect in different ways and also standing up for what you think is right. Tolerance is uh, like it's you or like someone adapting to their surroundings, um, like a situation you're adapting to that and fitting up with that, but you also are not allowing certain things to happen that could affect you in a negative way. Tolerance is um, standing up for what you feel is right. It's, you know, to give equal equal chance to everybody. You know, don't let anybody feel left out, and so everybody has a shot, like everybody else. Tolerance is standing up for what you believe in and uh, making a difference. How can we improve race relations in the United States today? I took psychology when I went to university. And what I learned about people is that we are all conditioned. We're all conditioned to either believe or not believe certain circumstances. And that conditioning that took place in the United States conditioned black to be bad. White was good. It's called classical conditioning. What we have to do as a people is we have to undo and that's going to take a lot. We have to pull those bricks out of that wall and rebuild our image in America. We can no longer allow people to equate us as people of color with stupid, uneducated, volatile, angry. We have to get rid of that. That's up to us. So that when you meet me, 
You say, she doesn't fit the classical conditioning. She doesn't fit what my grandmother said about those people. She doesn't fit what they said she would be. What can we do to improve race relations in the United States? I think we can improve by um, educating the adults, mostly because I feel like most young kids who are racist get that from the parents or grown-ups, basically, because the older generation is more likely to be racist. And um, we can improve that by educating them and show, uh, showing them different people and allowing them to learn that some stereotypes are not true. We have to, those of us who, um, you know, desire a, a uh, you know, good race relationships, uh, we have to speak out against it in any form. Uh, we can't accept it in our private uh, households, in our family household. We can't accept it uh, in the schoolyard. We can't accept it on the college campuses. Uh, we have to raise our voices collectively as Americans and say that uh, you know, we, we, we'll, we will always stand up against racism and we will always do the right thing. showing kindness to one another because because some people even though they have met people they would just stop and they would just don't they won't do any kindness or show any maturity because they because of what they're taught. Uh, I would actually like to see since like back then it was black and white against each other, I would actually like to see all races coming together and acting as one family as we are. Uh, because they're excluding, as they said, the Native Americans, they won't let them vote because of different reasons. So I would say because as they, as one said, all men are made equal, we, everyone should be equal and so like, so everyone should have their own chance in life to do what they should and the rights they should have. I would basically like to see like everyone um, united, everyone working together, getting along, because that's the only way we can have a better future and like that's the only way America can be great. Certainly the United States, uh, uh, speaking as a veteran, uh, the United States Air Force, uh, certainly uh, I still believe that this is the greatest country uh, in the world, and it certainly has been for me. Uh, and others from different geographical lo locales may beg to differ, uh, but I've never been to, a, and I've been to several countries, and this is the one place that uh, uh, where we were able to achieve one man, one vote. Uh, this is the place where uh, our country was founded on uh, the separation of church and state, uh, and, and we, our constitution mandates that um, every individual should be deemed uh, free, uh, born a free man, and have certain inalienable rights that are, that are guaranteed to us under the constitution. And so, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the rights due to the racial discord, the historical discord, uh, due, due to uh, 200 years of slavery and another 200, 300 years of Jim Crow, uh, we haven't uh, fully obtained uh, what, what, what people refer to as uh, the dream uh, or Martin Luther King's dreams. And so we haven't quite gotten the equity or the inclusion uh, that the Constitution says that we're entitled to, uh, but we've made great strides towards it. Uh, we still have a long way to go. Bye.